Well, back to cooking, because I promised y'all I would teach y'all how I fry my oysters at home. So actually, I'm draining these oysters. These are gorgeous Louisiana oysters, and I drained them in, of course, this, you know, is very special to me, my mama's little strainer. I always use it. You never season your oysters before you cook them. I don't anyway. You can do what you want, but I, all right, let me put them in here. Drop them here. And then, you don't season the uh, cornmeal either. You drop it in cornmeal and you coat them real well. Of course, my grease is heating up. As you can tell, I've got my onions in there to keep the grease from burning and also to tell me when my grease is hot enough. And I think they're talking to me. They're saying, okay, honey, your grease is hot enough. So here we go. I'm gonna drop these washes in here. Yes, just right. You don't want to fry them too slow because you don't want your oysters to be greasy. You want them to be coated, just golden brown. Okay, there, whoa, I love these things. They're great. All right. Mm. Oh, yes, very good. Well, I guess that's enough. You don't want to put too many in your pot. Yeah, that, that'll be fine. Let me see how that's gonna be. That here for whenever they're ready, because right when they're just right, you take them out and you put them on a platter and you eat them while they're warm, and that's when you put your salt and pepper on them. Of course, now I like mine fried crisp, very crisp. Some people don't like them like that. They just like to eat them kind of salt, but anyway. Well, let me show you what my favorite dessert to serve with a meal like this is. Of course, you can also serve it with other meals. And this is gonna be my strawberry pie. Now, what I do, I just take some sugar, put it in a pot, cornstarch, throw it on top, mix it up real well. Because if you don't, when you put water in there, it's all gonna lump up. Something about sugar being mixed up with flour or cornstarch that keeps it all from lumping up and you don't have as hard a time. Now you're gonna take your water and you're gonna add it to this. Now what I'm gonna have to do with this is cook it until it thickens. Of course, for time element here, I won't have the time to do that. So I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. You see how I mixed it up real well? It's like this. Of course, it takes about five to 10 minutes on a medium low fire. And then it's gonna get like this. Of course, this is as thick as you want it. So you, then to this, I'm gonna add this strawberry gelatin. Mix it up real good in here. That's gonna add to the flavor and then the color. Mix it up real well. Okay. Mmm, this is real, real good. Then to this, you add strawberries, of course. Okay, very good. Okay. Now what I've done before, I've lined an already baked crust with strawberries, you line that, and of course you almost can't have too many strawberries in a strawberry pie. So this will be thickened. Of course it's gonna be a little bit less thick than it's gonna end up after you refrigerate it. Okay, see how pretty this is? This is gorgeous. And you just throw it on top of your, your strawberries here in your shell. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Your whip top and goes right on top. And ooh, honey, this is gonna be wonderful. My niece, Deborah, taught me how to do this. And it's so quick and easy. And honey, it's delicious. So I really enjoy cooking it for special occasions. And oops, all good cooks are messy cooks. All right, see how pretty this is? Of course, you can decorate it any way you want. I've got one of these little Little Louisiana strawberries, you see how little it is? <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, let me go check my, there's your pie. <laughs> let me go check my oysters. I don't want to burn them. Oh, my goodness. I never forgive myself. Oh, look how wonderful, beautiful. They are nice and, well, they're not quite as crispy as I would want mine, but this is perfect for company. Because a lot of people don't like them really crisp, crisp, 
I like mine, Chris. This is beautiful. Yes. Ooh, wonderful. Now, some people like to eat their oysters or cooked or raw with a cocktail sauce. I'm going to teach you how I make my cocktail sauce. Of course, I've got some ketchup in here. To the ketchup, I'm going to add some lemon juice. Let me... And then I'll have some chopped up or grated onions. Just like this, see? Very good. Now, Mr. Charlie McKenzie, a very dear friend of mine, always supplies me with the horseradish. So this is Mr. Charlie's horseradish that he gave to me. And I really appreciate this because nothing like homegrown horseradish. And he sure makes a good job of it. All right. Now, you mix this up real well. Okay. You add your salt and pepper to this. Okay. Salt and pepper. Woo. And Louisiana hot sauce. Well, this is your pepper sauce that I, I cook with so much. Mix it up real well. Of course, I always add mayonnaise, mayonnaise, like Melissa would say, no, Mom, it's not mayonnaise, it's mayonnaise. But I'll say, she's not around right now. She's still on the boat. So I'm going to add just a dab of mayonnaise to this because it kind of smooths it out. It gives it that wonderful flavor that mayonnaise likes to put into some foods. Mm -hmm. And here's your cocktail sauce that will be served with your raw oysters or your fried oysters, which are gorgeous. Of course, now you always need a salad to accommodate a meal, which Cajuns seldom had too many salads. But we always had lettuce, tomatoes, and whatever. So I'm going to show you how to make a real quick and easy lettuce and tomato salad. Of course, you got to start with famous old pint jar here. I've got some oil in here, cooking oil. Add some vinegar and some salt and pepper. Just typical, you know, just typical dressing. Shake, 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 because I don't see what women do without this in the, in the kitchen. Ooh, yes. Plus, you get a lot of, uh, I guess, that's how I keep my weight so thin. Just pour it right on top. And it is just great. It's wonderful. So you let it set overnight even. It might even be a little bit better. So this is your completed meal. It's been great cooking with you today. Hope you've had as good a time as I have. Remember, eat oysters and live and love longer. This is very special time for me. I get a chance to sit down, relax, and read my mail from my fans. And I want to share this one with you. Marie and John Armon and their dog Herman from New Orleans write, Dear Miss Lucy, I look forward to seeing your show every week. Your love for cooking cannot go unnoticed. I bought two of your cookbooks, one for myself and one for a friend. I have enjoyed many of the meals. Your cooking style and many of the dishes you cook are very familiar. My ancestry goes back to Cajun, Louisiana, and it makes me feel so good to know the traditional meals are still served. I had forgotten some of them, but you brought them back to life for me. Keep up the great work while me and my friends join you every week in front of the TV. Sincerely, your loyal fans. Thank you, Marie and John and Herman, for writing this precious letter. And thank you for joining me.